techniques for better blending. Hardly anyone ever talks about it, but everyone would benefit from the knife project tool found in the tool shelf. Let's say that you have to deal with a very complicated piece of mesh. This torus knot is really cool, but cutting it into pieces would be real hard. Knife project is something you've probably heard of, and it begins by creating the shape of the knife. We're just going to use a plane, and we're going to have that plane face what we think is a good angle to cut that torus knot. So this plane is going to rotate on the Y 90 degrees. I'll introduce the torus knot and shift over into wireframe mode so I can view everything through everything and now in edit mode I'll make sure that this plane covers the extents of what I want to cut and very simply I will create edges that will slice and dice through the mesh I will put in nine cuts so I don't go completely batty these cuts are all straight lines you can cut it any shape you want I'm doing it straight for the sake of example now I'm going to switch over to faces with control tab F. I'm going to select all those faces and press the letter X to delete only the faces. Now you can see that I have a grid. This is the same sort of grid that you might use to slice a hard boiled egg. What I'm going to do is slice that torus knot like it is nothing more than a hard boiled egg. In object mode, I can press alt C and convert to a curve from mesh. Now with that object still selected, I will shift right click select the object I wish it to cut. I will prepare myself by getting into the view, the point of view that I want that object to cut through the mesh from, for, at. I will, I think you understand. So back <laughs> to orthographic right view. I want my mesh cut like that. So with my cutting object highlighted, but the mesh to be cut selected, I can tab into edit mode, make sure every piece of it that I want cut is selected. Now I will open the tool shelf with the letter T on the keyboard. And there's something called knife project, but that's not how you say it. It's knife project project. I will now project the highlighted curve through the editing, through the edited, did it edited object. I'll do what you just saw and I'll make sure that I select cut through. So it absolutely goes through. I will alt right click select one of the new loops that I just cut in. I'll do this to a few of them, but not all of them in this case. And in wireframe mode, I can see quite plainly, I am selecting the new edge loops, edge loops that just got cut in. I've gotten a few good edge loops selected. I should be able to press the keyboard combination, shift G and select similar edges by direction. This is the point in time where you'll want to tinker and be careful because you will pick up some parts of the mesh. Once I have all of these cuts verified as best I can, and I can always use certain clipping methods to make sure that everything is tally-ho here, I can press Control e and Edge Split. Every edge that was highlighted is now split. If I go to Faces, and select them all. I can press the letter P on the keyboard. I want all loose parts of the highlighted selection separated. It is done. I'll tab back into object mode. And now for the sake of what I would like to do, I'd like to make sure they do not share a common origin. I want all origins to go to the new geometry. I press this, I hit S to scale, and now I have successfully separated a complex piece of mesh that was cut. 
This sort of technique can be a fun thing for some people to play with. For example, if I choose one of these new meshes and add to it a modifier of solidify, it now becomes a little piece of solid instead of just a two-dimensional wrapping showing where the, all the cut was made. If I select all of them with this not highlighted but as the primary selection and press Control L on the keyboard, I can make links by modifiers. And now they all have the solidify modifier. Over on the tool shelf is a physics tab. If I make all of these an active object and I have prepared, say, a ground floor that can be a passive object, I can now go to the point of view that I originally had in mind and run a simulation on all of these objects which are now added to the physics information inside of Blender and they behave really well, really fast. There is an added bonus if you're still watching. I recommend that if you decide to cut text, as I have here, what you should do is do not extrude your text. Convert it to mesh as a flat two-dimensional object. Cut that flat two-dimensional object and then treat it with a modifier to solidify or do whatever it is that you want to do to give it some depth and information. These are things we should all know for better blending. So blend on and take care.